Hello everyone, in this video we will walk you through the important background and procedural information for the AP Biology Enzyme Lab, which is Investigation 13. My class will investigate the kinetics of a peroxidized enzyme. Generally speaking, this enzyme is an oxidoreductase enzyme, which is, uh, which is that it participates in redox reactions. In the cell, these reactions help to strengthen the cell wall and can play a role in defending against cellular damage and uh, infection. So what are the specific reactions this enzyme catalyzes? Well, if you look at this image here, um, basically in the presence of a hydrogen peroxide and an organic reducing agent shown here, uh, peroxidase can oxidize the reducing agent. And uh, that transfer of hydrogen atoms and electrons to the hydrogen peroxide uh, will reduce it and eventually lead to its decomposition, which we're showing over here. Um, the products of the reaction are water and the oxidized organic substrate. So this is a three-dimensional structure image from the protein data bank of horse, horse radis uh, peroxidase, which um, you, know, you could use in this lab. We are going to use turnip peroxidase, um, so that is shown here. So just before the lab, we will blend up turnip tissue to extract turnip peroxidase for our experiments. So what exactly are peroxidase enzymes doing in a turnip cell? Well, hydrogen peroxide uh, is a product of chemical reactions inside the cell. They are produced for defense by uh, defense against pathogenic microorganisms. Um, they're produced during photosynthesis and during times of stress in general. Um, the, the problem with that is that hydrogen peroxide itself can cause enzyme inhibition of important metabolic pathways for the turnip. Um, so if it inhibits those enzymes, it could eventually lead to cell death. So hydrogen peroxide then needs to be broken down when not in use or in, um, when its levels are too high. So that's where peroxidase comes in. Uh, if you recall from the previous chemical reaction, peroxidase can come in and um, basically reduce um, hydrogen peroxide um, in, in our chemical reaction, breaking it down. Okay. So the beauty behind this is that um, we can use a reducing agent known as guaiacol to help us in this experiment. So when the colorless guaiacol gets oxidized during the reduction of hydrogen peroxide, it forms a compound called tetraguaiacol, which turns orange. So you're basically going to see uh, that you know this colorless guaiacol will get oxidized as it gives its electrons to hydrogen peroxide, leading to the degradation of it into water. Um, you're going to see tetraguaiacol formed, and that tetraguaiacol turns orange in coloration. So you can see here in this Flynn scientific image, um, the colorless uh, solution is going to grow increasingly darker as the reaction occurs. Okay, eventually turning very dark all the way over to the left. So this is an example of a colorimetric assay. So it's, it's an assay, an experiment based on color, colorization. Um, and basically it can be performed in a uh, qualitative or quantitative fashion. So if we were doing this qualitatively, you would just look at the samples um, of your reaction and compare them to known colors. Um, the problem with that is that it's very difficult to de detect subtle differ differences in color. So we're not going to do this in a qualitative way. Rather, we're going to take this colorimetric assay and make it quantitative by using a spectrophotometer. Okay, so how does a spec work? Well, spec spectrophotometers uh, use light to measure the transmittance of light through a sample or by measuring the absorbance of light in a sample. So you can measure transmittance, the amount of light that goes through, or as light is passing through, you can measure the absorbance of that light in your sample. Okay, these two measurements work in reciprocal ways, however. When measuring transmittance um, in a spectrophotometer, readings will decrease as the sample darkens. However, when measuring absorbance, um, the spectrophotometer readings will decrease as the, or it will increase as the um, sample begins to darken, so absorbance will go up as the sample darkens. So the first thing you need to do is to blank your spec with a sample that's basically going to identify what a reaction with zero absorbance looks like. Okay, so you set up your machine with your blank reaction 
uh, your control reaction, showing the machine what zero absorbance looks like. To start the lab, we'll perform a baseline experiment to see how peroxidase, uh, peroxidase performs in the experiment we have created. So this image summarizes the first experiment where we're looking at uh, the impact of enzyme amount on the reaction. So take a minute to look at this. Trial one will have 0.5. We'll consider that a normalized amount of enzyme. And then we'll see what happens when we double the amount of enzyme in trial two. And we'll see what happens if we half the amount of enzyme in trial three. Okay, so we're gonna basically measure the, the effects on, of the rate of the reaction. So um, eventually you'll graph the absorbance. Okay, so now you know how to do the experiment. You know how it's performed. Let's get started on it.